If you will, go ahead and turn to uh, John chapter 17. Bless the Lord. John 17. I've got some uh, a few places I want to read this morning. I don't have many places to read, but uh, I sort of, uh, I won't, after I read some of this, I'll probably go to Jeremiah too. If you want to go ahead and find that, there's, there's some scripture in Jeremiah I've been reading and studying on all week. And, uh, I'll get to them after I read this in John, but uh, it, it's, uh, I've told uh, somebody this week I've talked to that I, I believe I've read more this week than I've ever read in my whole life it's in a week's time of reading and studying on things, and I don't know if it'll be any better or any clearer just because I've done that, but I, I've read and read and uh read things I've never read before out of this book and, and things come to my mind and, and just uh, a lot of thoughts this morning but uh, it's all out of the Word of God and I want to read it and, and right here in John chapter 17 well now let me flip I told you it's wrong John chapter 4 There's one verse I'll read over. John chapter 4. And this is a real familiar scripture about the woman at the well. And, uh, I don't want to read it all. I, I, I want to start here in one particular verse and read down. But this is real familiar. I, I know everybody knows this. The woman at the well. And Jesus is talking to her. And, and, and talking about giving her a drink of living water. And she'll never thirst again. And, and, and things. And there's a, some scripture right here that uh, you, that, that don't get I've heard David preached on it a time or two and you don't hear many people talking about the rest of this conversation you had with this woman Come on. Uh, in John chapter 4 and verse 19 I want to start reading and it's after he's told her about giving her a drink of a, a, a living water and, and verse 19 says and the woman saith unto him sir I perceive thou art the prophet our fathers worshipped in this mountain and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now he is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Yeah. And the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is coming, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Uh, now, I, I don't know if you really even listened to what I just read or not this morning, but these scriptures have been on my mind since last Sunday morning. And, and I don't know if you remember, remember last Sunday morning in Sunday school about being chosen and how we're a chosen people. And we're handpicked out of the world to not do the things of the world. And, and, and Jesus is telling this woman here uh, that the, something really stuck out in my mind in verse 23 that the true worshipers shall worship the Father. And, and I thought about it and I thought about myself all week long I've read and, and, and thought about myself uh, uh, after last Sunday and, and, and uh, knowing I'm handpicked out of the world and, and that's the way God ordained it and, and, and then I thought well am I a true worshiper? Come on. I thought that, that, that them pretty stern words from our Lord and Savior that the true worshiper. Come on. And you say, well, is, is there different classifications? Well, yeah, they are according to what Jesus just told this woman. They, they's true worshipers that shall worship Him in spirit and in truth. And, 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 and I thought about it and I thought, well, you, I went back and read about the Old Testament. And, and, and I read in the Old Testament, been in there all week. And I, I thought about the New Testament church. And, 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 and I thought about this church. And thought about this county. And thought about this world. What everybody does on Sunday morning, we all got up and decided to come to church. And. and, and I wonder how many people got up this morning knowing why you was coming to church. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. According to the Bible, we come to worship Him on Sunday morning. 
And according to this right here, we need to worship Him in spirit and truth. Come on. And you say, well, what is that? And, and I'm, you don't flip, dude. I'm going to read it. Verse John 17, uh, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Through thy truth, thy word is true. Amen. Uh, wait a minute, that ain't it. Bert, John 6, 63 says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It, 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 you want to worship God in spirit and truth and be a true worshiper, you have to go by this book. You Come have on. to line up with this book. Come on. Uh, it, it, it took me a long time to really figure that out. I come to church and... and, and uh, it, I always had the thought in my mind that growing up and coming to church that you come to church to fix things. That ain't how it's supposed to work. We come to, uh, we come to church to worship Him. I give you a thought to think about this morning. Maybe you ought to fix things before you got here this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you can come and worship God. So I, I was one of the types I'd wait. If I had problems in my life, I'd wait till I got here. And wait for God to, to deal with me and wait for Him to play the right or sing the right song or Him to preach the right thing and I come fix it. That ain't how it's supposed to work. I was supposed to fix it out on my own before I come to the house of God on Sunday morning. Uh, we, we call this the house of God. If you go back and read the Old Testament, that was a serious thing. Yeah. A very serious thing to call a place a house of God and what you've done to it and in it and about it. It was a serious thing to him. I, I'll read you something over here in Jeremiah chapter 7 that, that's been on my mind all week. And, and, and I, I, if, you ain't, if you don't read much in the Old Testament, I'd encourage you to. I know sometimes we get stuck on it. And it don't, make a, I, I, it don't make a bit of difference. I just know sometimes people don't, you know, don't really want nothing to do with the Old Testament. I don't know. Maybe that's for somebody. I don't know. It, it's good. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. For, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house, and proclaim that there, there this word, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, mend your ways and your doings. And I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if, thoroughly, for if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, yeah, if ye on. thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense on the bell, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. In this house which is called by my name, is this house which is called by, by, by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now into my place, which is in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Uh, Look, there's a whole lot in this right here, and I've went and read and studied, tried my best to go back and read stuff out of this particular scripture here. And and, and, and the one thing that stuck out of my mind, that, that there is a lot in it. And verse 9 and 10 talks about them coming in where you steal, murder, and, and swear falsely, and do all these things, and, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, 
We are delivered to do all these abominations. It, it, it's got to the point, and I know, I, like I said last Sunday, I hear a lot of things about other churches and people that go there and tell me things, and, 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 and it don't surprise me, and I, I don't think a whole lot of it, but it, it, it really lines up with the Word of God that, 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 that these churches and people, and I know people now it's, uh, in the house of God this morning that, 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 that live like hell, just think they can go to church and still worship God. Yeah. Uh, it, it's people that act like there's nothing wrong in their life sitting in the church this morning. It, 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 and like I just said, that ain't the way it's supposed to be. It, it, it don't take all week for God to convict you over a sin. It, it don't take if you see it on Sunday evening or Monday morning or Monday night. You don't have. You shouldn't have to wait till you get to the house of God on Sunday to fix it. It don't take God all week to do that. Uh, we should have come prepared this morning mm -hmm. to worship God. You say, well, what does that mean? You should have, you should have done have whatever's wrong fix this morning. It, it ain't a one of us in there that don't enjoy these meetings like we had last Sunday morning. These meetings were... God just takes over. We don't even have Sunday school. Yeah, come on. They don't come on. even get to preach. And, and, and things are going good. We all talk about them when they happen. When, and talk about them. man, if it's ever Sunday, that'd be good. Why ain't it ever Sunday? Because we didn't come to worship God. Uh, if, if you're sitting there thinking everything's all right with you, and you know it ain't, something's wrong. Yeah. Uh, it says uh, he goes on down there and talks about Shiloh and. and, and I don't know if I've ever heard that. I, I've heard the word, and, and and I don't know if I've ever heard anybody talk about it or preach on Shiloh. And, and he talks about doing unto the people what he done unto Shiloh. And he's uh, verse twelve. But go ye now to my place which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And it, 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 as far as I can tell, and I, I try my best to go back and study on Shiloh. And you go back, and that was the first place they set up the temple. Yeah. And, and 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 you go back and read and and, and I will there's a whole lot about it, but it comes down to it the the, the Ark of the Covenant was there. Yeah. And it represents the Spirit of God and the presence of God. God had it removed out of that place. Come on. Yeah. For the wickedness of the people. Uh, and, and you say, Well is God if we keep doing things, is God gonna take the spirit out of this church? He very well could. That's right. Yeah. God don't have to show up here every Sunday like He does. Come on. It's a blessing and a privilege that we get to sit in the presence of God like we do at this church. You want to know why there's so many dead churches? Because they're sitting there acting like they're sins and the things they're doing is alright. And God said He'd do exactly what He done in Shiloh and take His presence away from them people. That's why these dead churches. That, that, that's why these churches that... That, that when people come up here and they say, I've never sat in a church like that. It blows my mind. What are you going to sit in? Mm -hmm. It blows my mind, Mike. I, I, mean, it, 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 yeah. I mean, this ain't nothing new. And I know it wouldn't be whenever I, uh, this morning I'm sitting here going back over this. And I thought, God, this is pretty simple. Do I really need to read all this and that? And, and he said, yeah, but the, the, it, the simplest part is if you... It, if you want God to be in your life and be real to you, live by this book. Amen. But, uh, but like I said last week, we're all gathered together for what a reason. What understand is people think that being blessed is having a new truck. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't being blessed. That new truck could cause you more trouble than anything in life. Did you know having a new truck, praise God, if it's not paid for 100%, that puts a more burden on your family to have to pay for that thing? The upkeep of tires and keeping it running? Amen. Huh? And then most people that's got a brand new truck will buy them an old clunker to drive so they can save that one. What good is it? Amen. You'd have been better off with a clunker and drive a clunker and save that money. Do we give it to somebody? Yeah, amen. But everybody thinks that material things are a blessing from God. No. Not always. God don't care for you to have things as long as you're using it for His glory. Woo! Let me say that again. As long as you're using it for His glory. Praise God. Amen. But the blessing
blessings that comes with being a child of God and walking in unity and fellowship with the Spirit of an Almighty God. And with, hey, He done read it to you. He said, my words, they are spirit. Yeah. And they are Amen. life. Right. Amen. If you're in communion and walking in full fellowship with the blessed Word of God, let me tell you what it means to be blessed. It means that when your family's hungry yeah. and you fall down on your face and you call on a God and nobody else trusts in and praise God your family's full and when they're naked and you call on Him praise God they're clothed and they're warm Amen. when you need sunshine for your crops Amen. and the clouds roll back Amen. you know God's still on the Amen. throne. Amen. 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 Everybody wants to talk about how it used to be. When the old timers had walked down the roads, didn't even have an automobile. Now we got four or five cars in the driveway, and we still ain't got enough grit to go to the house of God. Amen. 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 You know why? Because we're backslid on God. We don't have a desire for the things of God. Amen. 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 But yeah, we want God to just turn heaven upside down and give us everything we ask for. Amen. God help you. <laughs> Them old timers that walk down the street, down the aisles, amen, and we got to be so pretty when we come. Our hair fixed just right, our clothes perfect, our shoes shined, amen, our cars shined up. Them old timers used to get out in the field and sweat. And they didn't work the men and work in the field to feed them babies through the winter because they knew their family would not be able to live yeah. if they didn't do what God wanted them to do. The women would stay at home and take care of them babies and love them and teach them about loving and how a mama should leave their children. Hey, mama abandoned their children but lay down and die for them. Come on now, praise God. Woo! Amen. 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 And the men come in wore out and the wives would fix them supper and treat them like a husband's supposed to be treated. The husbands are still the head of the house. Come on. And they work in the field, brother, and they trust God because He had to feed that family. And they trust Him. And when the crops was dried up, Jeff, praise God, they didn't go by a man-made machine to pump water to the fields. You know what they looked to? They looked to the hills from which cometh their hands. And they'd get down and they'd pray that God would move and help them through this season. And He'd be out there working in a sweat of boiling. And you know what would happen? There's some kind of breeze that blow by. And they They think serving God is getting up on Sunday and putting on your back and coming to church. Amen. They work just as hard as they could work and then when it kind of give them enough time to walk to church, they throw everything down right there and they'd leave it. And you know what they done coming to church? Most of them didn't have nothing to ride. Most of them didn't have nothing. Right. Amen. had nothing fancy. Everybody was just everybody. Amen. And they started toward the house of God expecting God to move. Amen. Yeah. And not only did He expect Him to move when they knew that He would be there and they could worship Him not for the things He'd done in the house of God but for the things He'd done, sister, all week long. Amen. Amen. They went to tell Him to sing. And to praise Him. Amen. Praise God because He moved for them. And they come in a shouting. And you know why? Because the God had 
that they served was real. He had a mother hand and he had her family all hung up a walk into the house of God. And they was glad when they said, let us go to the house of God. They went on to praise in Him. It wasn't a burden for them, amen. It was an honor. That's right. And they come in and shout. They come in knowing that God was going to bless them. Amen. Amen. But nowadays we're tangled up in the world. We live like hell six days a week and then we want to come in and sing I love Jesus. They stand in the door now and everybody thinks that's the way it's supposed to be. Did you know 90% of the places in Ash County never felt by fire of God Amen. move? They think it's supposed to be that way. Amen. Because when it does move, it scares them to death, sister. And they don't know what to do. They just look at one another like some kind of fanatic. I say we thought about this church this morning and the brother mentioned this church has been mentioned three or four times. Bless him, Lord. You know what makes this church different? Because it's filled up with misfits. Bless him, Lord. The people in Ice County that nobody wanted. Mm -hmm. That nobody could love. That didn't fit in, Lacey Furry. Amen. 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 That's not like everybody else. That's got something to thank God for. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's what makes this church up, Jeff. People and nobody, they don't even understand why you need to be in church this morning. The lifestyle that you live, what? the places you've been. Yeah. Well, I got news for them. Yeah. I don't go to them places anymore. Yeah. I don't got a God anymore. Yeah. That brought me out. Something's been broken and people just throw to the side and God had a place for it. Yes. Yes. Oh yes. So I'll take that and fix it, he'll be mine. Amen. Praise God for that, Billy Joe. Thank God that he chose me. Look down through all that alcoholism and the drugs and the hell that went on on the Lord's Creek and he said, Father, hey, when that's established, I'll use him. Amen. Praise God, don't sin. Don't let him die in that car wreck. But praise God, hold on to him one more day. Father, I'm going to show the world what I can do. And praise God, I'm evident from heart what God can do. When the people said you couldn't be saved, Bless when him. they said You tell me God can't. Amen. I come to worship Him. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't come to find Him. Yeah. Most of you come in the house of God this morning looking to find Jesus here. When I got up this morning, He put His arms around me and gave me balance to get down the stairs. Eat breakfast and sat in my in my kitchen with my wife and my two girls and praised him for my family this morning. Yeah. Walked to the barn to feed and got to the end of the barn and said, God said, This is a coming son. Hold on just another day, amen. Praise God, it ain't over yet. In the last little while, I've let people hinder me so bad. Bless him, Lord. At one time in my life, sister, they didn't nothing bother me. Bless you, Lord. <coughs> nothing. Because God was always in my mind and He's ever present. He just hooked me up yeah. and let people living like hell and doing things all around me. And God just busts through and shine. For the last little while, it's bothered me so bad because I love Him so much. If you love something or somebody so much and people go to harm in Him and put His name down, Amen, and bring a reproach on what He's done and He died for us, it makes me sick. And then people come to the house of God on Sunday morning and set like everything just perfect and go right back out into the world and use my, my, my God's name in vain, cuss like everything. 
Praise God, you didn't get right with God. I don't care who you are. Man. Still a cuss and you're bringing reproach on the name of the Lord. Amen. And you want God to bless you and your family. Amen. Look around you. You need to change your way of speaking right. and your tongue. You need to change the way you live. Amen. Amen. Bless you, That's right. The people don't like that. Amen. Amen. People don't like that. But it's the truth. Amen. 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 I've let people hinder me for a long time now. The hindrances is over. Because you know why? These people dying and going to hell and these people in this world this morning, you're going to find out, praise God, what God showed me this morning. These people that want a new life. Yeah, yeah, these people that would give anything to sit in the house of God and feel what we feel yeah, this morning yeah, yeah. and have that fellowship just to feel like they belong to somebody that means something. Amen. I told the sheriff's deputies here just a while back, you know, they they know me. People say, I go through somewhere and all the deputies, they know who I am. Sure they do. Some of them was looking at me, looking for me one time in my life. I was coming up the road, tip I blow the house on my old horse, and some of them pulled up to talk, and I just laughed. I had to bust out of life, and they said, What in the world's the matter, you preacher? I said, You don't know how good it feels. And they said, what? I said at one time in my life when I seen you coming, I'd have to run. But I said, I ain't guilty no more. And I said, praise God, you can't be done. Can I get a message? I don't have to run anymore. Praise God, I'm not guilty, Jim. It's all in Jesus. I feel this morning. Man, I ain't playing games. You know what I'm willing to do? I'm willing to walk off and leave you. <coughs> Amen. Those that don't want to live for God, there's nothing I can do about it. I blame myself because he didn't listen. These people that sat right in this church, praise God, for the last six months and heard all the preaching. Amen. It's been preached out of the pulpits of this church. Huh? And went right on and done exactly what was preached against. I got to tell one of them. Don't come and tell me you appreciate everything I preach and then you're living like hell because you'll get embarrassed real quick. Amen. Amen. Leave this church after hearing about shacking up, amen, and that road will lead you straight to hell. And then turn right around and hook up and go to shacking up. Praise God, you ain't serious. Okay? And if you think this preacher won't tell you in public right in front of everybody, you better not get cornered somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Because I don't do good at being quiet. I love the Lord, sister. I ain't playing games. My life, let me tell you something about me. My life's not a joke. Bless you, Mom. The night Jesus Christ saved me, amen, 20 some years ago on Friday night, I was no longer an alcoholic. Yes. I had no reason to drink beer. I had no use to go to the liquor store unless it was to preach. Can I get an amen? amen. And that makes the will look at. Hmm? Now these people know who I am and they know what God done for me and they know that if I go into Blackjacks on the street of West Jefferson, if you say, child of God, whoo, look at them about to fly. Yeah, bless him, Lord. If you drive by and you see my truck parked at Blackjacks and you see me walk in, my God, stop and come on in because we fixing to have me. Oh God don't send me to get somebody out of that bar. Some people go down the street and say, guess who I seen going in like that? 
You ought to know by now, praise God, if I go in, it's not the drinker liquor. Amen. It's to get somebody. Bless him, Lord. What kind of testimony do you have? Yeah. Praise God, brother. Yeah. Teach you. I'm telling you right now. Yes, this don't get you. Why does it take a preacher a week of revival to get you stirred up? Amen. It's because you're cold on God. Amen. Hey, you ought to be just like an old reservoir with the head of the spring that's coming out of the rock. And Jesus Christ is the rock. And the Holy Spirit's got it tunneled into this vessel. Holy place for the Holy Ghost. Every drop it goes in, it'll fill you up. And before long, it'll run out. Amen. You can't hold it. Amen. You ought to be filled up and running over before you ever get to God's house. Yeah. And if God's done something for you, yeah. how can you hold it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hey, how can you hold it? I get excited. I can't hardly stand it. God's fixing to move me. I'm telling you right now, it's fixing to get real. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make one more jack at this thing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, you better look out. <coughs> Say, preacher, you crazy. I'm going to try my best to win somebody else to Jesus Amen. before the Lord comes because that's what He left me to do. He told me a long time ago that I was a soul winner. He said, you, hey, He said, you're a soul winner. Jerry's helped me a many a time to convince people to walk out for Jesus. And all I'm looking for this morning is one more that wants something better than what you got. Amen. Amen. Hey, I don't know about you, but I get sick of feeling down. I get sick of feeling bad. Yeah, man. You ain't no better. You know different than I am. You know the best thing in my life is Jesus. Amen. When ain't a dime in my pocket, and the love of God begins to move in my life, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. Amen. You ain't got nothing you can give me that I'd give God up what I've got. That's right. My birthright is not for sale. Amen. Sing a song. Michael Combs sung a song, not for sale. I can remember when he first put that song out. Yeah. I can. Yeah. And some of you may know my like not because that's good. I got things to do. Like I tell you right now, he sold out. Amen. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Wrote a song not for sale, and when the money started coming, he forgot about it. Amen. God and the things of God. That's right. So you can't judge him. Where did the power of God go? Amen. Where's the power that was in the songs that he wrote? Where's the power that was in the... And you'll say, you'll get in trouble over this preacher. Hell, it's, it's, I, I stay in trouble all the time, amen. amen. But I'm telling you, without the power of God, you can't be a witness for Jesus. You've got to be in fellowship. <laughs> when you quit letting God lead you, yeah. And you go selling what God gives you for money. Yeah. And you go living a loose life and you go to doing all this stuff, praise God, the world wants you to do. And you be transformed from what God had you into the, what the world wants you to be. You sold out. Amen or amen. That's what's the matter in the world today. People won't take a stand for Jesus because they're afraid it'll hurt their pocketbook. Amen. Amen. How many of you be willing to give your job up? Give your new truck up. People tell you stand for Jesus, you're fired. What are you going to do? They wouldn't have to fire me. I've done been heading to the door. God knew Tiffany whenever God saved your Uncle David and called him to preach. I've never been good about being pushed. You won't make me quit living for Jesus. Amen. That's all. I've been pulled out. been pushed out. But I'm still preaching. And it's still the truth. 
And the power of God still with me. <coughs> and He's still my God. Yeah. He's still my... Am I, listen, Mom. Do He walks with me. Say, preacher, you crazy. Yeah, I know it. This world, I do look crazy. Just how real is it to you this morning? You see, the blessings is when your baby gets bit in the face and her lips split plumb into the palate of her upper mouth. And the scars and the swelling. When you have nobody to turn to but God Almighty. Amen. When you pray that every stitch won't be the scar. And her face is mangled up where the dog bit her in the face. You want to see what the blessings of God looks like? Do you want to see a true blessing of God, people? Kyle, would you stand up on him Bless and let people look at what God can do? Right here, my baby. Right there was the evidence that God can do. Am I hey, I've got evidence every Sunday morning when she walked to the table that day and the patches of hey, and her face swelled down I couldn't even eat breakfast. Amen. <laughs> Every stitch, sister. I pray to God when they scar for life. And you can't look at her and tell me where it's been. Amen. You can't tell me where it's been. You see, I'm blessed, man. I wouldn't trade that for a <laughs> I found out the more I've got, the more it takes for me to work to keep it. <laughs> I about decided, praise God, I don't need all this stuff. <laughs> and I think it's handy. And it's convenient. We call it modern day conveniences. Did you know that? And they'll work you to death. Yeah. 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 We'd be better off with nothing. Yeah. Computer. Got to have a computer to do all our work on it. Keep up with all of our stuff, amen. And praise God, then that boy computer is what splits your family up. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen? Modern day conveniences. By bringing in modern day conveniences, we brought hell and the devil right in and let them loose it on our families. Yes, sir. Come on! Amen, preacher. <coughs> Well, you'd have been better off if you'd have just rode her down with a piece of paper. <laughs> Basically, what it boils down to, we're sorry. If we had to follow a mule, team of mules, Jeff, every day instead of driving him big old tractors, amen. <laughs> I was looking at a hay shock the other day coming through the field over yonder, praise God, down, amen, down the road. And that old big old shock of hay is standing over there in the field, looks so good, praise God. And you know, if we go back to that, praise God, amen, I wouldn't look like this. <laughs> Come on! I'll talk about me. I'd be in better shape, I'd feel better. God made it that way to take care of our bodies. Our mind. And did you know if you do a good honest day's work, your mind ain't all on this old ungodly stuff. Uh, can I get an amen? Somebody holler amen. 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 You go ahead and finish. Go ahead and finish. You go ahead and I'm going to try to be quiet. Praise God, I feel good. My God, I know who my God is. Yeah, yeah, amen. And I know He can touch. Rob, I see what God's doing in your life and I see what He's doing in your family and I've watched Him bless you. We've prayed and we've seen God work many times. And my mind goes back when people that knew you would say, I'd ask poor Rob if he'd ever seen Him. If he, and people say, oh, he's bad. He ain't going to... No hope for Rob. No hope for him. I'd say, yeah, we are. Yeah, he may. And that Sunday morning when you call the house, we'll know what time the meeting start. I told my wife, you better look out, Rob, to coming in today. Amen. Just like God said, he walked the aisle for Jesus. Amen. God made a daddy out of him. Made a son out of him, a brother, amen. 
made a church member plays a chapel church is proud of him. Amen. and made a child of God that God can use even in the core systems God used you to show his glory Amen. Amen. my God tell me sometimes we gotta walk the hard road but it's just I'm gonna hush you Amen. the blessings ain't a new truck God's blessed me all kinds of new stuff sure but can you use it you know I've got more blessings out of that old rusty truck than anything I've ever owned. You get one that's all rusted up, beat up, and you run into the bank every once in a while with it. You just praise God! <laughs> huh? <laughs> now we're all country people sitting in this church. You'll understand what I'm Lacey, you'll understand what I'm fixing to say. Me and you'll know what I'm talking about. Don't it feel good every once in a while to get a man hung up in the mud to where you just sling a little mud, amen. amen. And you just run and if he runs into the bank, you just shout. Feel good every once in a while to run over something. <laughs> Woo! Amen. <laughs> You're comfortable with them. Jeff, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Every once in a while, the young will come out and be, oh, I'll just tear up Jack. Amen. Amen. The best experience I've ever had in the hay field is when, brother, uh, when, <laughs> when Jeff's dad run over the fence up yonder. She pulled it. I tell them all the time, I learned to drive on Norse Creek. If you can't get around, drive, drag it over. <laughs> Me and Summer's up there putting up pain, going to go off the mountain. We was all ready to go. What a time we'd had. Jeff, I'll never forget that as long as I live. He said, Preacher, I'll take your tractor and rake. I said, Take her on and start out of the gate and don't run off, Jerry. Go ahead, no, I ain't. You go go ahead. Come on. You got another place to read. I know. Come on. Read I'm going to tell this. Go ahead. I'll read <laughs> Me and Summers was there and he started out of the fence. Jeff will never forget it. And he hooked the gate up, rake over the fence post and he backed up and he started around and he hooked it over it again and backed up and he started out and he hooked it over the same post. About the fifth time, he never even looked back. He took fence, post, everything and just kept on never looked back just to drive it. And I liked till I cried and I thought, praise God. Hey man, thank you Jesus for country people that you put in my life. Then don't get excited about things. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You see, that's memory. Amen. Amen. That's memory. I tell we sit around sometimes at my house to talk about things that's happened for years. We were talking the other day. You remember the time we forgot you up on the mountain? And I had to come back and forgot Sonny on the mountain. He's way up the night. And I had to thank Lord have mercy. We've all gone. It's like about 2 o'clock in the morning when I finally got back up there to get you. Finally peaceful. <laughs> We was wide open. We're going to put hay up. Hey, man. forgot about something. He's all humped up and under the dish more about to freeze to death. You see, that's memories. You see, that's the blessings of God when you can spend your time with people you love. And you know that God is in the presence. That's the blessing of God. I don't need a new truck to serve God. I don't need a new Cadillac. I found that out when I was trying to start to preach. Amen. All I need is a prayer of God in my life. I can ride a moped and preach, bro. Pedal a bicycle and preach. Huh? Come on, Jerry. Read what you're going on to read. Come on. Come on. Finish up. I'm going to hush. I'm going to try to be quiet. Come on. Come on. I'm going to hush. Come on. Come on. There's just one place I want to read, and I don't know. This. They probably ain't, I know there ain't many people got much out of this this morning, but it, David mentioned it two or three times there, and it, that how serious it is, and that's what it is coming down to worshiping God, is how serious is it to you? Because if it's serious, you to, like I said, fix things before you got here this morning. Uh, 
Worshiping God, and I, I know I've read this before, but but and I don't know if you even own a dictionary, but it helps sometimes look some of this stuff stuff up. Worship means extravagant respect or admiration for for or devotion to something or someone. Extravagant love or and extreme submission. That, that, that's when you can really go to worshiping God. And, 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 and I say that because of what I read there in Jeremiah about them uh, sitting there in the house of God and thinking they's all right with all these things they've done. It, but uh, verse 11 said, In this house which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. You go back and read uh, some familiar scripture about Jesus uh, going to the temple and cleansing the temple. Uh, the people that bought and sold doves and the money train it's a serious thing. It, it, uh, uh, that's why you can't just go to any church and get what you get. Right. Up here, it, it, it's not serious to them. And, and, and I guess the whole point of this uh, reading this is maybe uh, maybe if you ain't fixed whatever's wrong in your life this morning and, and, and you get to think about worshiping God, maybe you'll fix things. Maybe they... Something has hindered you this whole time, and you ain't never really worshipped God. It, 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 they, uh, let me. You don't have to turn to it in Isaiah chapter ten. I got three verses. It says uh, Isaiah ten twenty says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped to the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. In truth, the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though, for though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return, and the, cons- the, the consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. That's all, all throughout the Bible that God declared to, to do away with the people and to destroy a certain people. And... and, and uh, it, I, I, among reading all this, I went back read and was studying on the remnant, and I thought maybe that's all I was supposed to read. And all of a sudden, all this stuff come together. A, a remnant is, is, a, is a small piece left out of something. Amen. Come on. Uh, and, and that's what the true worshippers are. If you're a true worshipper, you're a remnant yeah. left out of what's been down through time. It, 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 it's a uh, him are talking about uh, stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. Is what the remnant done. They didn't stay in the mess they in. They didn't stay around what was a hindering them. They got out of it. Uh, I, like I say, the only thing on my mind was 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 the true worshippers. Uh, after reading last week and the thing and, and and been on my mind about being handpicked and chosen by God and. and that made me feel good. Then I got to think about being a, a true worshiper and being the, the, the remnant that's left. Uh, this thing's fixing to wind up. And I believe if we're living our lives for God, we are the remnant. Yeah. We're, we're left of a, of a small we're a small part that's left. Uh, that's all I got to read this morning, unless somebody's got something they want to say.
Fourth word, there we all stand so great in need of this morning. Stay follow, Lord. Lord, give y'all honor and praise. Stay follow, Lord. Lord, just take his money. Stay follow, Lord. Use it in thy will and thy way. Stay follow, Lord. Dear Lamb God, stay follow, Lord. For you know what he's still in need of it. Stay follow, Lord. For the foundation of the world. Stay follow, Lord. Lord, give y'all honor and praise in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 We've got a, a thank you card that says uh, for everything you've done for being the special people that you are, thank you so very much. We wanted to say thanks for everyone, for the money you gave for us. It was greatly appreciated, but most of all, for all the prayers from both of us, you all are very special. Thanks again. Love in Christ being in Patsy Coe. Uh, we're going to have the business meeting this Saturday, this month. Is anybody guy? Anybody else guy in now? I know I tried to send out a phone tree message for Wednesday night service, and some folks didn't get it. We've got new faces in our church, so I got a pad and a pencil. If you got a name and a number you want on there, uh, write it down, and I'll add it to the phone tree. It's a slow system because it takes almost a minute for a phone call. So if we have to put a message out, it takes like you know, there's almost 200 of us, so it takes you know close to three hours to get everybody a phone message out so we can't it's hard to do a last minute message and get to everybody before it's time but so if you got a number or name you want on there just put it on there and we'll, I'll add it to it okay. <coughs> we, Go ahead. we have three of the under the blood shirts left there's a extra large and a medium youth and a medium adult if anyone's interested, let me know. And next week is our youth meeting in Fellowship Hall, just a reminder of that. Any birthdays and anniversaries this last week? <coughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you.
team, you better practice to me. Uh, you pray real hard just a few minutes. And, uh, the boys asked us to, no, Jamie asked to sing a song, and I don't know if I can find it or not, Jamie. So you'll have to pray real hard. Just pray for us this morning. We we just like to thank God for being in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, the devil, he always tries to fight. He he's good at what he does. And, and uh, you uh, you just pray for me this morning. Seem like uh, we've had an awful good morning. And then all at once, just just a second ago, my head started spinning. So I'm just going to mind God. God said He's going to take care of it. So if whatever happens, happens. God knows everything. And I come to watch God move this morning, and I've got something on my heart. I'm going to try to sing this song for Brother Jamie, and, and uh, then I'm going to try to read you what God said to read to you this morning. And I want you to pay attention because everybody may not get this. God didn't say everybody would get it. But He did say there'd be one here that would hear it. <coughs> And if you're that one, I wouldn't want to be talking and whispering and doing all this other stuff, praise God, when God is a-talking to me. Amen. 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 Uh, this is a serious thing. This is a matter of life and death. And somebody's life is in the balance this morning. That's how serious it is. Somebody's life right here in Pleasant Chapel Church this morning is in a balance. I'm going to do my best to sing this song for Brother Jamie. We pray real hard this morning. God will have His way, brother. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> I am the man, Thomas. I am the man. Look at these nail scars here in my hand. They drove me up the hill, Thomas. I am the man They made me carry the cross Thomas, I am the man I am the man Thomas, I am the man Look at these nail scars Here in my hands They crowned my head with thorns Thomas, I am the man They nailed me to the cross Thomas I am the man, I am the man, Thomas, I am the man. Look at these nail scars here in my hands. They pierce me in the side, Thomas, I am the man. I died on the cross, Thomas, I am the man. I am the man, Thomas. I am the man. Look at these nail scars here in my hand. They buried me in the tomb, Thomas. I am the man. In three days I rose, Thomas. I am the man. I am the man, Thomas. I am the man. Look at these nail scars here in my hand. They buried me in the tomb, Thomas. I am the man. In three days I rose, Thomas. I am the man. I am the man, Thomas. I am the man. Praise God. Look at the nail scars here in my hand. Now I want you to listen this morning. By the grace of an almighty God, I was praying this morning seeking God's face and God said to come and read somebody this Scripture. Now I don't know about you, you may not be looking for something from God, you may not have come looking for God, 
You may have just come to soothe your conscience this morning. You may just come, amen, because you're miserable in the state of mind you're in. But I'm here to tell you there's a God Almighty that's been looking for you. And He said to come and tell you this this morning. You see, I've come to get somebody today. Now, praise God, this is for somebody. Now, hey, some of you people know that I'm not playing games. Praise God, you know that same God, amen, that came and got you, came looking for you one day. Praise God, amen. He didn't, I didn't choose Him. He chose me. He's got His mind on somebody this morning. Morning. He brought it down for you. Woo! You better look out now. Praise God. I want you to turn with me to, over in the book of Romans. Amen. In the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. Now somebody better listen because I come to get you. God come to get you. Out of a miserable state of mind. Out of a heartbroken state. Amen. Out of something that you can't handle this morning. God Almighty sent Jesus in the Spirit of an Almighty God to come and get you today. You've come to the right place because God's been seeking for you. And I'll tell you how you'll know who I'm talking to. God's been dealing with you. God's touched you. And you've even tried to do better. But praise God, God said to tell you, you're good. Ain't good enough. Because you've got to believe what I'm going to read to you. And if you'll believe this, you can be saved. I'm looking for somebody that wants a new life this morning. Amen. Amen. You see, I'm searching this morning. I'm looking for somebody. I'm a looking for you. God's a looking for you. Are you listening? I'll tell you how you feel this morning. God said this to go ahead and tell you. I can tell you what I believe. And I'm fixing to tell you, praise God, what God said you must believe. I'm going to tell you how you feel. You're miserable. Your insides tied in knots. Your world's turned upside down. You're not satisfied. You've tried to... Th- now, this is what God said. I'm just going to mind the Spirit of God. I know somebody don't care. You've tried the things of the world. You've tried the things of the world last night. You tried to drown what you're trying to face, amen, and it ain't done no good. You know what happened? You woke up this morning in a worse shape than you've ever been because the devil says you're a failure and you're no good, amen. But God had to see some good in you because He brought you to a church that loved Jesus. Amen. And He brought you where the power of God's a moving. Amen. And He eventually to save your soul if you want to be saved. You see, this is the key this morning. I'm looking for somebody that wants a new beginning, that wants a new life, and that'll come to Jesus. Amen. 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 That's what God said. God said all of you ain't going to get it. But He said you go, son. I'll show you. He told them over there when He chose Moses to go get His people, He said, I've heard the cries of my people. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't you know that God already knows what's happening in your life? He already knows what has happened in your mind. He knows you're struggling. And I believe, Jamie, with all my heart, there's people that want to do good. They want to do right. And they can't just... They've reached and reached and reached and climbed and tried to move their life around and they've almost got a hold of it. And they can't just reach out and get it because something is pushing them back. That's a demon's of hell. Hey, man, let me tell you something. I know a God this morning that can bind the hand of Satan and set you free if you want it. Amen. Woo! I believe that. God said, read this. The Bible said in the 10th chapter of the book of Romans, 
He said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. You know what my prayer is for you this morning? That you can be saved and delivered and have peace in your life. You have no peace. You fear with the demons of hell all night. You're in trouble this morning. Your soul is tied in knots. You're not happy, amen. You're not peaceful. God knows this. You're guilty. Have you ever felt not guilty? Yes. I'm not guilty this morning. It's under the blood. Hallelujah. The Bible said, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Now I want you to listen. They have a zeal of God, but according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You've got a form of righteousness in your own eyes. Everybody's good in their own eyes. Everybody thinks they're right in their own eyes. But you never come to the knowledge of the righteousness of Christ. Because if the Bible said they that do righteous is of God, amen. And they that do evil is of the devil. Praise God! Now listen to me. The Bible said, amen, listen. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The Word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the Word of faith which we preach. Amen. It's in there. Let it out. Amen. Use it this morning. Somebody's on the verge of getting right with God and the devil don't want you to. You can stay miserable. You can stay trying to get it right. But this morning you can have it right when you leave this church. Amen. The Bible said amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible said, Amen, that if thou shalt... Now I want you to listen. <coughs> if, thou will, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead... He said, Thou shalt be saved. Amen. This morning you may be miserable. This morning you may be heartbroken. You may be bound down in the prisons of this world. But praise God, the Bible talked over Isaiah. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and anointed me to set free the captives, to bind up the brokenhearted, yeah. to preach the acceptable year unto the Lord. Hey, let me tell you something this morning. I come to deliver you. He said, if you'll confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 5, He said, Who is He that overcometh the world? But He that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You want to overcome the problems in your life? Believe Jesus is God's Son. Can I get an amen? Somebody needs to pray this morning. Somebody needs to give it all to God. Quit trying to do it. Can I get an amen? My preacher, I'm trying to do better. Quit trying to do better and give it to Jesus and walk on as a child of King. I'm going to tell you it's going to get worse. You think it's bad now? Wait a few more days. 
You see, you've not all submitted yourself all the way to God. You've been a playing in your own righteousness. You've been a, a man telling people how good you are and you're still living like hell. You're still in your own mess. You see, when Jesus saved somebody, <coughs> brother, when them old alcoholics truly believe, yes. amen. <laughs> oh God, that Jesus is the Son of God. Yes. And they began to profess that and confess it with their mouth. Yeah. Their heart begins to change. Yeah. And brother, when it changes, they become a new creature. Yes. Paul began to preach about a faith in a man called Jesus. Yes. And the Bible said in a name yes. that there's no other name under heaven no. whereby men yes. must be saved. Yes. They power the name of Jesus. And those that believe in the name of Jesus are a new creature. Can I get a name? Yes. Things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You want to be a different person? You see, I'm preaching to somebody that's not satisfied. Maybe you're a child of God this morning and there's a sin in your life that praise God standing between you and God. You're not satisfied either. I would say the way of a transgressor is hard. Amen. You see, God made it hard on them. That was in a backslidden state. Say, preacher, I'm preaching you the Bible. Huh? When you get tired of being miserable, you'll get right with God. Can I get an amen? And then when things begin to move in your life and you see how good it was from the beginning, you could have had that all along. Hey, come on, amen. Somebody is right now just about willing to give it all to Jesus. You're the one I'm looking for. You're the one I'm looking for this morning. God said you'd be in this congregation. I don't know you, please. I know you're here. Amen. 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 And you know you're here. Huh? Somebody's here. I'm going to finish reading this. We're going to call for a song because somebody has been looking for something better. You know, every once in a while, I'll wake up of a morning and and I can still taste the misery. <coughs> Have you ever been miserable? Dave, sometimes, been 20 some years since I've ever let anything alcoholic ever enter my mouth. 20 some years. And sometimes I can wake up and still taste the misery. Still taste how it felt. Hey, man, waking up sick and hung over. And then all at once the goodness of God will pour in my hands. Woo! Hey, you have a drink from heaven. This world won't taste the same. And you see, you can play games. But I'm looking for that one. I ain't looking for them that's playing. I ain't looking for nobody that ain't serious. I've come to get somebody that wants more from God. Don't get quiet before it gets any better. Somebody's listening, Tommy. Yeah. Amen. Amen, brother. The Bible said, Amen, you pray just a few minutes. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believe on Him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jews and the Greeks. And the Greek, For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in whom they have not, have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sin? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Amen. Praise God from a saith, say, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? 
First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation. I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hand unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Amen. Praise God. Let me tell you something. God's been calling out to you for a long time and you know it. But today may be the last call. Today may be when God turns His back and walks off and leaves you where you're at. Come on this morning. Amen. Sister, get you a song. <laughs> Listen. Why would you wait? I'm looking for somebody that wants to pray. I'm a calling out to somebody that God's reached His hand down all the day long. And He's been a calling your name. Heed the warning this morning. Wouldn't there be one want to come and pray? You know God's a talking to you. Come on. Just how much do you want to live for Jesus? You ain't got it right yet. Come on. Come on. Come on this morning. You need to pray. Come on. Come on. Come on. While these young ages are praying, while peoples are hearing the voice <laughs> of an almighty God, while somebody is heeding the call of God, somebody's hearing Him, somebody else hears Him, and you know it's God a calling. You know how you felt this morning. <laughs> Listen to me, people. Can't you feel the presence of God? My God, can't you feel it? Come on. Why would you fight it when you know you're miserable? When you know all the peace that you need is laid out before you in the presence of God. Come on right now. Come on, do you want it? You've got to come get it. He said, all them at thirst, come and drink of the water of life freely. You've got to be hungry and thirsting for the things of God. Would you come? Come on, can't you feel it, church? Children, just believe Him. Take Him in His Word. He said He'd meet you here. Now let me tell you what the devil will tell you. You've been too mean. He'll throw you away. That's what he told me. But in the 6th chapter of the book of John, he said this, it's a Father's will that all that He given to me, He said they come unto me, and in no wise would I cast one out. Praise God, amen. It's God's will that you'd be saved this morning. Amen. Come on. My God, you're one prayer away from victory. Why wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't you want to be in fellowship with God? Why wouldn't you want to pray? My God, why? Why this morning? This world's just going to get worse and worse. The things of life is going to go downhill. But Jesus Christ is the same forever. Same today. Amen. And forevermore. In Him there is no shadow of turning. You can count on this man called Jesus. Whew, come on. If you know God's touching you, why would you have to think about it? Come on. How long will you suffer? How long? My God, these young ones are giving all to Jesus. And you know what's going to happen tomorrow? They're going to go out into the school systems. They're going to walk down the streets of West Jefferson. And you know what will be the difference between now and then? And when they walk down, you see right now, victory's coming. And when they walk down the streets and the aisles and the hallways,
ways of the high schools of West Jefferson. They got victory today in Jesus. They can rally back and say it's all right with God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on this morning. While these youngins are praying. Yeah. Had no peace. Woo! Oh, joy with him. Come on. But Jesus came. Woo! Yeah. Dear Esprit. You ought to praise and praise him. If he's your best friend, praise God, turn him loose and let him have his way. Let me tell you something this morning. There ain't nothing like having Jesus, brother Greg. There ain't nothing like it, brother. Praise God. Hallelujah. When I am sad, the is free. Save my soul. He saved my soul. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget. I'll never forget, forget the day. Hey, hey. He makes me glad. He makes me glad. When I was saved. When he comes, I'm looking forward and hastening for the coming of the Lord. Woo! Come on this morning. God touching your heart. Somebody want to give your life to Jesus wholeheartedly. I'm talking about going all the sin out and taking up Jesus. Taking up your cross and following Jesus. Anybody want to be saved this morning? Come on. Yes, he says, my soul. He says, my soul. Bless his name. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I'll never The day he gave. He makes me glad. He makes me glad. When I am sad. When I am sad. The dear is free. The dear is free. I am. Oh, sinner, come. Woo! I promise you this morning, He'll not throw you away. He said if we'll confess our sins, that He will be faithful and just to forgive us of those sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen. We can go back home, brother. Home in peace. And Jesus, amen. Washed in the blood of the Lord. My home with peace in our life. I'll tell you what. You'll give it to Jesus. You won't have no need for beer when you get home. Oh, brother. If you don't give your life to God, you won't have no need for the liquor of this world when you get back. I ain't never been a begging preacher. You see, God said you'd hear it and you'd know who you was, and I know you do. You see, I know these people in this church, Lacey, God told me to come, and you're one of them. Me and Billy Joe talk about praying for you many times, and we pray, and I said he's a coming. God said he was. Said he was. God told me he was. Now you think I'm playing games? Let me just tell you a little something. I don't play. God tell me I know it's happening. It happened this morning, buddy. I was praying one evening about dark at my house and I was praying there at the house and I got done and God said they're coming. And I said, who's they coming? He said, watch and see. 
Remember that? Yes, sir. Yeah. As many of the times the day before that, I'd be right out the road, drunk, just sitting, thank God was dealing with me. It was, it was, I wanted to go out there. I wanted to talk about God. I wanted to have that, you know? And I was just scared. I was ashamed. And I, 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 I just, it was just, just, I don't know, God, God put it in my life for a reason. Yeah. Put y'all in my life for a reason. I thank God for every one of you. Ain't nothing you can't ever come with God. Amen. 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 Don't be scared. Don't be ashamed. Amen, Amen. Amen. brother. <laughs> Best thing that ever happened to you. Amen. 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 God told me that night, He said they're coming. And I stopped praying, and there's a knock on my door. The first one come in, sat down in my living room, and He wasn't in His right mind. You see, God's bigger than me. Amen. 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 God's bigger than math. He's bigger than any pain pill. He's bigger than any quarter of white liquor that's ever been made. God's bigger! Amen. Before it's over, it's four of us sitting at my eating table. Me with my Bible open. You remember? Yes, sir. God of touching hearts. They wouldn't have been accepted in the church houses of this world. And they wouldn't have been accepted by a lot of people. But God loves them. Yeah. And they left my house. And I got down and prayed to God that He wouldn't let them wreck and get killed before they give their life to Him. Hey, you better look out this morning. I've done prayed for you. Amen. Amen. <coughs> I'll never forget the next morning. I called him boys at work. I said, we won't be there. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to White Top to win soul. Amen. Remember that morning? God told me, he said, you go to the store and spend a little time and talk to people. And I got to preach in the parking lot that morning. He said, now you go back to my Malaysia Furries. He told me you were ready. Well, she probably ain't been the same. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of this young man. Yeah. Say, preacher, you're crazy. Let me tell you something. I'm not crazy. I know what God means and I know what He says and He's looking for you. You can give everything in your life up, praise God, and throw it away and that's what you're doing if you're not living for Jesus. Amen. Throw your kids away if you want to. <laughs> Amen? Because I'm going to tell you what you're doing if you're not living for God. You're leading them straight to hell. Can I get an amen? amen? Because they will follow you. Yeah. And I was uh, getting ready this morning and the message that I preached out at Beaver Creek kept coming to my mind and he kept coming to read this to somebody. Amen. Now let me ask you, who you got in your life you want to follow you want to follow you? And your young man sitting beside you, Lacey, it's just like you. You know what this young man done a couple of Sundays ago? He come and give his life to Jesus. Yeah. 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 Everybody looks at him like a little child, but he's got more sense in God than a whole lot of you do because you know what he's done? He heard God's voice. Oh, Amen. 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 I didn't pray, and some of you still want to pray, and you ain't moved yet. Yeah. I didn't tell him to make it easy on people. He said to tell you. I preached a message one time, I'm going to leave this with you, and then you just go on and live whatever you want to live, because I'm going to glory. Amen. With the you. Amen. I got a nephew, his first boy born in our family, before old Jacob ever come along. Proud of these young men. They mean a lot to me. My life in front of them means a lot. I've got a little nephew that's always been just absolutely crazy about horses. He just, right when he's born, God gave him a desire for a horse. 
I told this many times, but this is somebody this morning, Jeff, and I'm going to hush and we'll go home. And he come to my house, brother, and them old horses, I always had horses all my life, and he'd come and when he was little and he'd take him a sandwich bag and he had his pocket and we'd brush our horses off and he'd be there and he'd pick them hairs up and he'd put them in that bag and zip it up. They'd come with him and I asked his mama one evening, I said, what in the world is Dylan doing with them hair? And she said, when he gets home and he gets to missing them horses, said he'd get that bag out and he'd look at the smell. The smell of them horses. He's fascinated. And he's a little boy and I was trying to take him. We was that last one evening and Kenneth Clark had got a new horse and he'd heard about him up and down the horse street, what a fast animal he was. And he asked me, he said, Uncle Dave said, can we go see Kenneth's race horse? And I took him up to our place and we went in the barn that old stay and got him out and that old boy just messed with him. We started back home, and this is when it gets serious, when you start seeing these little ones, basically. And I walked off, and I went on toward the truck, and I looked around, and the little one was gone, and I thought, Lord, I hope he didn't go back and get that stall. And I started back to the barn, and he come around the barn. He wasn't looking at nothing else. He was watching the ground. And that little boy... was doing his best to put his foot in every footprint that I had made in front of him. You haul your beer around you youngins long enough, you'll teach them how to drink. You smoke your dope further out, praise God, they'll learn to smoke dope. You live like hell in front of them, and they'll learn to live like hell. Come on! Man, bless him, Lord. You cuss in front of them, they'll learn to cuss. You play games in the house of God, and they'll learn to play. That this is just a show, amen, but it's not a show. Sister, I've walked and I've prayed to God, and He let me walk. Hey man, a pipe way that my nephew can sit, but his footprints in mine and follow me to Jesus. Amen. Can I get an amen? I want him to go, praise God. Amen. Somebody watching you. If you want to go home with me and get home go with Jesus, you've got to get through the door first. And Jesus Christ is the door. Amen. 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 Come on, church. Amen. I know this ain't a shouting meeting, but praise God, somebody's soul said on this. And do you know what you're sacrificing today? By not coming whenever God says come? You're throwing your family away. Amen. You ain't st- there ain't nobody stealing it. You're throwing it away. Right. You give it up. If you all know what's happening, look in the mirror. So I can't help it, preacher. You know what you can do? You can get right with God. You can lead your children. You can lead your family and live for Jesus, amen, and live a victorious life. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on! Amen. Amen. Bless you, Lord. Got quiet, eh? If I could pick them up and carry them, I would. But you know, it's up to you whether you want to lose it or not. That's that's your choice. Look around you. What's important? What's important? We're gonna ask for a song. These young people's got things straightened out with God. We're going to ask for one more song to give somebody an opportunity to pray. You see, it's between you and God. God told me to come get you. And that's all I know this morning. God said to come 
and to tell you that if you'll confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved. You can have victory if you only believe God this morning. Get you another song, sister. Praise God that somebody come on and pray. We're going to... How many times in your life has God's amazing grace intervened? How many times that you didn't get what you deserved? How many times that the grace of God has spared you and your family? How many times? Do you want to pray? Would you come? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. It was grace. Come on. Grace is a calling. Pleading with you. this morning. Come on. It's a prayer you hold it in your arms, baby. There's a time in your life, amen, praise God, my mom, when you didn't know if you'd get to see that baby again. You remember praying around this altar? Got a miracle in your arms. God changed minds, didn't He? God can change lives today. He's done it down through time and time again. Come on. Do you need a change? Come on. Will this somebody step out and just come? God is touching you. Come on. Get you another song. We're going to fellowship. Brother David, I've got to stand up and say something. It's been on my mind. I'll bless you, boy. And I may have told this before up here. It's been on my mind all morning. I've got to tell it. I don't want God to beat me for not saying it. This might be a help to somebody. My brother, he died back in April of last year. And he lived about six years after he had his heart attack. He laid down in the hospital down at Duke Medical Center. And for 21 days, he didn't know he was in this world. And they done open heart surgery on him. And when they pumped his heart up, he had so much black, he got in his blood screen. He stopped all his vessels up in both his legs. He lost both his legs. He hardened his left hand. He had one, one joint on his ring finger and two on his pinky. The doctor said, said, don't say anything about his legs. Don't say nothing. But the day when he woke up, <laughs> I'll never forget it. He said, I know I ain't got no legs. One day I'll have a new saying. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I seen where I was going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just as clear today. Yeah. He grabbed my head. He always called me Tom. He said, Tom, it was the beautiful place that I ever saw. Bless you, Lord. He said, it's a beautiful place that it ever saw. He said, I crossed over a bridge. And he said, I seen the water was crystal clear. The fish are swimming. And he said, I seen gold. nuggets as big as my fist. 
And he said, I come up to him place. He said, just like the Bible stands at the gates. And he said, there was a man that was sitting there at the gate. And he said, I spoke to him. And he said, can I enter in? He said, no. But someone wants to speak to you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he and he said, he's seen a bright light. Hmm. He said, that's all I could see was a bright light. And he said, that was a voice that he heard. He said, you entered in at the side gate. He said, go and tell what you saw. Amen. Oh, I'll never forget that. And you know that's exactly what he did. For about six years. He would go and his friend cheer, I think. And he'd give his testimony. <laughs> yeah, brother. I'm looking forward to that day. Yeah, remain it. I'm going to hide. Yeah, amen. Right, Scott, I'll, I'll be there with you. Amen. And I'll see that place. And I'll see that place. Amen, brother. We're almost done. Not a mom daddy and my brother has already gone home. I get homesick sometimes. I want to go. I want to go. But I just had to tell that testimony. It might be a help to someone. It might be the difference between heaven and hell for somebody. This is real. This is real. But I see that a lot of times. I'll never forget. He said, Tom. It's the beautiful place that I ever saw. It's, heaven's a beautiful place. And I long to go there. And I don't want nobody else to be left behind. Praise God, we need to tell everybody. This, this, we got a better place to go. God bless you and I love each and every one of you. I pray for you as best I know how. Just pray for me. Just <laughs> Louie, get your song.